Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi. Today I'm going to show you how to utilize GNSS receivers to obtain post-processing kinematic observations, otherwise known as PPK. Now in the last several videos we talked about using GNSS receivers to obtain real-time kinematic observations, or RTK. RTK solution allows us to observe points with a real-time correction so we'd have high accuracy coordinates right when we're measuring the point. This is achieved by having a base station act as the control segment, and we use the rover in the user segment to measure points and have it corrected by the base to give us high accuracy positioning. Now this is only going to happen if these two devices are connected at all times. If these two disconnect from each other, then your solution is no longer fixed and you have a single solution with very low accuracy. A single solution is when the base or the rover are communicating with satellites alone but not communicating with each other. This means you only have two of the three segments necessary to have an accurate solution. Now while RTK is gray and definitely the most convenient solution to have, there are times where you're just unable to use it. Now if you are using your rover and you're unable to connect to the base station, let's say you're too far away, or if you're using the cores network you have no internet access, or perhaps there is no cores network in your area because you live in the middle of nowhere, then you're not going to be able to utilize RTK. You're going to need to use something known as PPK, which stands for Post Processing Kinematic. The theory of PPK solution is that you are connecting your rover to the satellite and observing single observations. These single observations have a low level of accuracy. However, while you're using your rover, you're logging the raw data file that will observe your position every second. And the base station is set up over a known point and it's logging the same exact raw data. This raw data between the rover and the base is completely independent and the two receivers are not communicating together during data collection. This raw data file has a lot of different exports, but the main one that is used is the Rhinex export. The Rhinex file is then used by post-processing software to correct the position of these single solution points that you're observing. This is achieved by syncing up what time you took the observation with the rover and comparing it to the base station, which is why both receivers are logging data every second. Now PPK does require additional work, but it does have its advantages. One big advantage is that you have full control of the adjustments that happen to your data set. With RTK solutions, you really don't know what the raw data looks like. You're just observing a point and you're getting the real-time corrections for that point, but you really have little to no control of the corrections that are happening in real time. Whereas with PPK, you're taking the raw data observed by both receivers in communication with the satellite and you're applying your own corrections using whichever post-processing software you want. Now you do have the option to log data while you're capturing points in RTK. That way you're able to check your work. You can then compare your RTK solution and then run the raw data file to have a PPK solution and compare both data sets to make sure that your data is accurate. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to be using the rover and taking single solution observations. While logging the raw data on both receivers, we'll then run it through post-processing software and achieve a PPK solution for the points. I'll then measure the points with RTK and compare the coordinates. If this type of content excites you and you want to learn more about surveying and GNSS receivers, then please make sure that you like this video. Also be sure sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the bell notification so that you're notified anytime I release new content. Also, I just launched surveyshirts.com, so check that out and make sure you buy yourself a nice surveying shirt. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is set up the base station. Now, this pink circle is the known point that I'm going to set up my base station on. If you don't know how to set up a base station, I'm going to recommend that you watch this YouTube short video I made. The video is about one minute long and it quickly covers what you need to know about setting up your GNSS base station. Okay, and we've got 4.75, 475. If you're looking for a more detailed version, I've created this video right here where I go through the specifics step by step and show you exactly how to set up this base station. Alright, I've got the rover here and as you can see I'm using the Imlid Reach RS2 receivers. And for data collection I'm using the ReachView 3 app found in the App Store. These are the equipments that I use and if you're interested in finding out more about the Imlid Reach receivers, click on the link in the description and check out the Imlid Store. Now I'm going to show you how to connect both of these receivers so that you can log data for PPK solutions. I'm going to start by tapping on base 
base and connecting to it. And if I go down here, you can see I have no correction input and I have no correction output. If we go into GNSS settings, we are in kinematic mode because we're gonna be having a mobile rover. I've selected all of the different satellite systems and put my update rate at five hertz. Under base mode, I'm going to select configure. I'm going to change the coordinate entry method to manual because I have a known coordinate for my base station. Under antenna height, I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna type in my antenna height, which was 4.75. I'll hit done and then save. The reason it updates it to 5.19 is because that is the true antenna height and 4.75 is just the height to the bottom of the receiver. Now for coordinates, I have them saved here, so I'm just gonna copy them over. Longitude is a negative 82.9887072. Latitude is 42.556526070. And our ellipsoid height in meters is 150.566. Done and save. All right, we have all the information for our base station. We'll go back to settings. We'll go back to receivers. Click on logging. And in the raw data, I'm gonna select settings. I want Rhinox 3.03. That's my preferred export. You could use other exports, but this is the one that I like to use because it's more universally recognized. You're gonna select the satellite systems. I just keep them all on. Logging interval, one second. So every second, it's gonna take an observation in its logging data. You can check off the log for Opus. That way you can use it in the Opus solution software if you wanted to. And then the measured height of the antenna in meters. What is 4.75 feet converted to meters? Okay, 1.45 meters, so we'll put in 1.45, and that's it. I will hit apply and start recording. And now our base station is recording data. Okay, now let's talk about setting up the rover. What you'll wanna do is now connect to the rover. And while you're in the rover, I'm gonna go into settings. And as you can see, correction input is off and correction output is off. We are receiving a single solution, which is exactly what we're going to be doing the entire time. Under GNSS settings, make sure your positioning mode is kinematic because we're going to be moving the rover around while we're logging data. Make sure all of the satellites that you want are checked off and that your update rate is at five hertz. And that's pretty much it, it's pretty easy. So we'll go back and we'll select logging. And then just like last time, you'll click on settings, you'll look at the menu here, it's the same setup. You want Rhinex, you want all the satellites, and you will also be logging every one second. Now I understand that you're not gonna be capturing points every one second, you will manually be measuring points, but you want the raw data file to be capturing every one second so that it can correlate with the base station data in order to do the correction in post-processing. Under measured height, we have it set to two meters because that's gonna be the height of our pole. And that's it, I'll hit apply. And then we will start recording data. And now our rover is logging its raw data. Okay, so I wanna be able to measure three points. I'm gonna start by setting one point right here. This will be point number two. We'll measure another point here. This will be point number three. And then this manhole will be point number four. Now let's use the rover and measure all three of these points. Okay, place this on number two. All right, now that I have this set up, I'm gonna go into survey, start a new job. I'm gonna call this PPK job. All right, and here I am. I'm gonna add a new point and I will call this PPK2. All right, save. Now the pole height is 6.56 feet, which is two meters. I am gonna take 10 observations and average them. And where it says fix only, I'm gonna uncheck that because we can't take the shot while it's fixed. This is a single solution. And with a single solution, we'll be processing the corrections afterwards. This looks good and I'm going to measure. And you can see our standard deviations are really, really high, but not to worry because we're gonna fix it in post-processing. Okay, this point is done. Let's go to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna take the pole, set it on point number three. All right, we're set up on point number three. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit measure and it's going to take the observations. Look at that. Discrepancies are one foot in the elevation. That's horrible. Absolutely horrible. All right, last one, point number four. Last point, point number four and measure. And we're going to measure this last point. 
Okay, and we're all set. All right, now that we've collected all the data, I'm gonna show you what you need to export. The first thing we need to export is the project that we just did. So these four points that I collected, I'm going to go ahead and export this project and select CSV. I'm just gonna email it to myself and call it PPK job send. And now I will have an email for myself with the coordinates of the points that we measured with the single solution. Now we need to export the two raw log files. I'll go back to Rover, select log, and it should still be logging data. There it is. So I can go ahead and hit stop and it's compressing it in the background. Okay, great. Now I can tap on this button and it'll download and export it. And here we go. We can send a new message to myself and I will call this PPK job Rover raw send. Now let's connect to the base and export the raw file from the base. Click on base, logging, and here's the raw data. We will stop. If I go down, it'll compress in the background and I'm going to download the Rhinox file, email, and I will email it to myself again and I'll call it PPK job base send. And there you go. Now you've exported all the data and that is exactly what you need to do in the field. Now let's head into the office so I can show you how to process the data as well as applying corrections to your single observation points. Hello and welcome to my living room. All right, let's take a look at the exports that we have. The first one is the PPK job, which are the coordinates of the points that we measured with the rover using a single solution. We then have the raw base data and the raw rover data, and they are both zipped. So we're gonna have to extract both of them. So I'll right click, hit extract all, extract, and I will extract this one as well. All right, now that we have all of the files extracted, we're gonna go ahead and start the post-processing software. Now I'm using using the Imlid Studio. This is the software that Imlid uses for their GNSS receivers. If you're using a different brand, then you might have a different processing software. You can always use Opus, which is a processing software that NGS released. I'll go over Opus in a different video, but for today, I'm going to be using the Imlid Studio just because that is the software that is most optimized for the Imlid Reach receivers. So I'll go to start and I will open up Imlid Studio. All right, and I'm gonna optimize this. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is process the PPK data. So step one, processing. It's gonna ask me what type of processing this is. We have single, kinematic, and static. We're gonna choose kinematic because our rover was moving while we were doing the data collection. Next, it's gonna ask me for the rover Rhinox file. So I'm gonna click on rover, and I'm gonna open up my PPK folder. And I see here my reach rover raw data. I'll click on that, and then open up the observation file. Next, I'm gonna click base, and and I'll go back and make sure I open up the reach base raw folder and I will select the observation file and hit okay. Okay, after we've opened up the observation file, we need to indicate the position of the base station. If we click down on here, we can select latitude, longitude, height, in decimal degrees, and you'll see the coordinates that we input into the Reach View 3 app, which are the coordinates of the base station. If we see here the measured height of the base station, uh, it says that it was 1.45 meters, which according to Siri and our conversion from our 4.75 feet, uh, that comes out to 1.45 meters. So this is the measured height of the base station. So we can go ahead and click save. And now I just need to identify the Rhinox navigation file. This is the file that ends in P, and you can select either the base or the rover. It doesn't really matter. This is just going to be the destination file for your project. So I'll click on that, I'll hit open, and then I'll click process. And now it's going to process all of the points that we observed. I recently just started a Facebook page. You can go ahead and follow me on Facebook. Join our Facebook group as well if you'd like to interact with surveyors all over the world. Also, if you like the Reach RS2 receivers and the interface that Imlet has built, check out the Imlet store, link in the description. These receivers are extremely affordable and I'm very impressed with the way they've been performing. All right, great, we have all of our points here. This is probably where the base station was, and then I was on the move and where I stopped for point number two, on the move again, and then I stopped at point number three, and then finally all the way down for point number four. The green circles are the fixed solutions, and the yellow circles are the float solutions. 87.9% are fixed, and then 12.1% are float, and that just tells me which points are more accurate than not, and we wanna make sure we're just utilizing the fixed points for our 
corrections. All right, now let's talk about generating the corrected positions for all of our single observations. So we have our PPK solution. Now I wanna import the CSV file from our project. I'll go ahead and click on here. I'll go out and where it says PPK job, I'm gonna click open and here we go. We have our project. It's gonna ask me what I want the data quality to be. And the only one we're gonna check is the fixed solution because we don't wanna correct our points to flow or single solutions. We only wanna correct to fixed solutions. So I'm gonna hit start. And now we have three out of the three points were averaged in a fixed solution. And take a look at that. Here we go. We have point number two, point number three, and point number four. Man, this looks great. I'm gonna click on the show results files and we have all of our outputs here. And the most important one to me is the PPK job corrected. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the CSV. And here we have our points. And I've got the RTK positions for these points. Uh, so let's go ahead and compare the RTK position to the PPK position. And here we have all three points PPK2, 3, and 4, and RTK2, 3, and 4. RTK1 is the coordinates of the base station, so you could just ignore that. The measure of latitude and longitude is in degrees, and the ellipsoid height is in meters. So initially, we're going to calculate the errors in the respective units. Then we'll be converting those errors to centimeters for my metric users, and then to feet for my US Imperial users. A simple equation of equals the PPK2 longitude minus the RTK2 longitude equals and we will copy this formula over. And now we have the errors in degrees for the longitude, the latitude, and the error in the height in the meters. In centimeters, that's less than two centimeters in the longitude, and only point number three was at one and a half centimeters. Point number two and four are under one centimeter. For the height, we are just over two centimeters at point number two, and right about one centimeter for points three and four. In terms of feet, point number three came in at one hundredth, and point number two and three are at 0 0.06 and 0 0.04. Latitude, three to five hundredths of a foot, with point number four being at 100. And the elevation, 0 0.07 for point number two, and around three to four hundredths for point three and four. So as you can see, PPK is a viable and very reliable resource. You can definitely use it to check your RTK solutions, as well as being able to have full control of your coordinate corrections. Thanks guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.